Imagine for a moment you're sitting under a clear night sky. You look up and you see thousands of stars. They seem scattered, random. But what if I told you over 1500 years ago, people could look at those same stars and calculate their movement with extraordinary precision. Not with computers, not with telescopes, just the strength of their minds and knowledge passed down through Sanskrit texts. Now picture this. While most of the world was figuring out basic survival, these ancient scholars were solving equations so advanced that we're still using their principles today. You might wonder, how is that even possible? And if this was true, why don't we hear about it? The truth is, ancient Sanskrit mathematicians achieved things so far ahead of their time that they sound impossible. But they're not. And today I'll tell you their story. A story of genius, of perseverance, and of knowledge that, for centuries, has been hidden from the world. Let's start with a name you might not know, Baudhayana. About 2800 years ago, he wrote a book as part of a series called the Sulba Sutras. Now, you might think, what's so special about that? Well, Baudhayana wasn't just writing instructions. He was solving geometry that would later form the foundation of what we know as the Pythagorean theorem, the idea that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Imagine this, you need to build a temple altar for a sacred ritual, and it must be absolutely perfect. How do you do it without any modern tools? Baudayana described, step by step, how to measure and construct right angles and diagonals that were mathematically exact. His words, written in Sanskrit, explain the diagonal of a rectangle produces an area which the two sides make together. This sounds simple today, but this is the same principle we use to build skyscrapers, airplanes and bridges. What's incredible is that Baudayana wrote this around 300 BCE, yet most of us are taught that Pythagoras discovered this in ancient Greece. Why? Think about that for a second. These scholars were not working with calculators or rulers as we know them today. They were looking at the land, observing shadows, measuring with ropes and sticks, and still, they figured it out. But the brilliance of Sanskrit mathematics doesn't stop there. Let me tell you about another genius, Aryabhata. Born in the 5th century CE, Aryabhata was a scholar with a thirst for understanding the world. At just 23 years old, he wrote a text called the Aryabhatiya. Now here's something fascinating. Aryabhata calculated the value of pi, yes, the same pi we use today, 3.14, to an accuracy of four decimal places, 3.1416. Pause and think about that. He did this 1500 years ago with no computers, no machines. Today, pi is critical in fields like engineering, space science and physics. But Aryabhata figured it out with nothing but observation and calculation. He also described something that would later shake the foundations of astronomy. In his text, Aryabhata wrote that the Earth rotates on its axis, causing day and night. Now here's where it gets emotional. For hundreds of years, people believed the Earth was the center of the universe. They thought the sun revolved around us. Galileo would later be persecuted for suggesting the Earth moved. And yet, Aryabhata had already written about this truth a thousand years earlier. How did he know? How did he come to such accurate conclusions in a time when most people couldn't even comprehend such ideas? Aryabhata also calculated the length of a year as 365.3586 days, astonishingly close to the modern figure of 365.2422 days. I want you to think about this. Today we send satellites into space to calculate these numbers. Aryabhata didn't have any of that, yet he was only a fraction off. How can we possibly ignore such brilliance? Now, let's talk about a man who gave us something we use every day, yet his name is rarely spoken. His name was Brahmagupta, and he lived in the 7th century CE. Brahmagupta gave us the concept of zero. Think about this. Zero isn't just a number. It's a revolutionary idea. Without zero, you can't have algebra, calculus, or even the binary code that runs our computers today. But here's what makes Brahmagupta's contribution even more remarkable. He didn't just say zero exists. He defined how to use it in calculations. He wrote that zero, when added to or subtracted from a number, leaves the number unchanged. It might sound simple now, but back then this was groundbreaking. He also introduced negative numbers and gave us the rules for solving quadratic equations. Here's a thought. Without Brahmagupta's work, modern science, economics and technology as we know it wouldn't exist. Zero is the foundation of our digital world, yet we rarely ask where it came from. The concept of zero would later travel to the Middle East, where scholars like Al-Khwarizmi spread it further, and from there it reached Europe. But it all began in India, written in Sanskrit. Bhaskara II, a brilliant mathematician from the 12th century, he wrote a text called the Lilavati, which was not just a math book, but a poetic masterpiece. Bhaskara wrote the Lilavati for his daughter Lilavati. Legend says that Lilavati was curious, intelligent, and full of questions, so her father created a book just for her. 
The Lilavati is filled with puzzles, problems and explanations that make math feel like magic. For example, Bhaskara wrote beautiful verses to teach multiplication, division and geometry. One of his puzzles goes like this. A flock of birds sat on a tree. Half flew away, a quarter played in the pond, and one bird was left sitting. How many birds were there? It wasn't just about solving equations. Bhaskara turned math into art, making it accessible and beautiful for everyone. But Bhaskara's genius didn't stop there. He also described concepts that would later form the foundation of calculus, a subject that would be rediscovered centuries later by Newton and Leibniz. Now, let's pause here for a moment. These stories aren't just about numbers or equations. They're about people, scholars who saw the world differently, who asked bigger questions, and who believed that mathematics could reveal the truths of the universe. But here's where it gets heartbreaking. Much of their knowledge has been lost. When the Nalanda University, one of the greatest centers of learning, was burned to the ground, thousands of manuscripts were destroyed. Today, 90% of Sanskrit texts remain untranslated. Let that sink in. 90% of ancient Indian knowledge has never been read by the modern world. What secrets are hidden in those pages? Could they help us solve challenges we face today? We may never know unless we start asking the right questions. I want you to imagine this. Next time you hear about calculus, algebra or astronomy, think of Aryabhata, Brahma Gupta and Bhaskara. Remember the Sulba Sutras and the brilliant minds who worked quietly, centuries ahead of their time. Their work wasn't about recognition, it was about understanding the universe, about connecting with something greater than themselves. And now I'll ask you, does this knowledge deserve to be forgotten? If you feel inspired by these stories, if you believe these scholars deserve to be remembered, hit the like button and share this video with someone who needs to hear it. Leave a comment and tell me which part of this amazed you the most. And if you want to keep exploring the secrets of life, the universe and the extraordinary people who shaped our history, subscribe to Universal Insights because knowledge becomes powerful only when it's shared. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video.